Hi folks, Scott Kelby here from KelbyOne.com, where people go to get really good at Photoshop. I've got a Photoshop trick for you today that was inspired by Mark Wagner's website. So this is Mark here. Mark won our competition. We had a competition for a, a gallery showing for a solo show. Uh, and uh, Mark was one of the people, one of the Kelby One members that submitted to this contest, and he won. And so we're going to be featuring Mark's work on March 18th at a gallery opening here in Florida. But I want to just show you the effect that uh, when I was talking about Mark's work, like on my blog, and he's got this, he's, let's let it load here. <laughs> I, I have the world's slowest uh, internet connection today, but you can see the effect right here. It's So somebody said, hey, how do you do that shadow effect that it, it kind of, little shadow leaking out here and leaking out there and all that and so that's what we're going to do today we're going to show you how to do that it's actually incredibly easy let's jump over here to photoshop and one of the things if you'll notice on mark's site that he did he had a grayish background and that's why when you put a white square on top of it it stands out so much so that's step one is is fill your background with a very light gray color and then you're going to draw a rectangle on top of it just a white rectangle you're going to use the rectangular marquee tool over here draw yourself a rectangle, fill it with white, and then you're gonna drop your picture on top of it. I grab one of mine that's on top. All right, so we have, look, we have three layers here because we haven't got to the fun part yet. This is just the stupid stuff, right? So you have a gray background, a white rectangle on top, and then your picture. Okay, now let's build the shadow. So here's what we're gonna do. You want the shadow to be approximately the size of your picture. So go to your white rectangle layer and hold the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Windows and click directly on the thumbnail for that and it will load a selection in that exact same size. Now, now we're gonna build our shadow. So I'm going to create a new layer, but the new layer I need to create, the shadow is going to be behind the white rectangle. So there's a keyboard shortcut for that. If you hold the Command key on Mac or the Control key on Window and then you click the new layer icon, watch, it will create a new layer below the white layer, watch. Command click right there. On Windows, it would be Control click, and now the new layer's there. I'm going to hide the other two layers from view just by hiding their little eyeball icons. And here's what we're going to do. Here's how we make the shadow. It's really kind of cool. We're going to get the gradient tool because if you look at Mark's shadow, and let's just go ahead and do that real quick. Why don't we just jump over here? If you look at Mark's shadow, it goes from very dark here, and then it fades out to kind of a gray right same thing over here and you don't really see the shadow in the middle it kind of tapers off to nothing there so it's got to go from black and then out to to gray and there's a million ways to do this this may not be the most efficient way but it works you're going to get the gradient tool you're going to go choose and make sure black and white are your foreground colors but you want to choose the second gradient which is black to transparent right black to transparent not black to white but black to transparent. Then we're going to choose this particular gradient here, which basically goes, you can, it shows you a, a preview of what it does. It goes from uh, a, the center and then out to the sides. So, and that'll be clear what it means. There's a, a name for it, like a linear, it's not linear, it's something I forget, reflected gradient or some crazy thing. Anyway, here's what you do. Take your cursor, start in the middle, and then drag out to the side and you hold a shift key so it goes perfectly straight and you'll see what it does well there there you go so it's dark in the middle and then it fades out and and if you draw a very small little one you get a very thin line if you draw a long one you get a longer line so you might actually want to go a little past the edge so it's kind of darker like that so there's the there's the the shadow now here's how we make it work make the other two layers visible so you can kind of see what's going on we're going to still working on this layer with the gradient, right? We're still working on it. That's the one we're working on. First, I'm going to get the move tool and I'm going to use the down arrow key on my keyboard to nudge it down a little so you can see it sneaking out of the bottom. All right. And there you can see how it goes from really dark and then it goes to this really light, light gray over here. Now, here's what we're going to do. The rest is pretty much all done in free transform. So press command T on Mac or control T on Windows to bring up this free transform bounding box. Now, the shadow stops before the edge of the print, so I'm going to tuck in this side a little. I'm going to tuck in this side a little. All right, and here's the fun part. Right-click on your shadow. So we're just going to right-click, and here's what we're going to choose. Warp. When you choose Warp, you can now move this thing around like it's putty. So what we're going to do is we're going to click right in here, and we're just going to drag it up. 
so it creates that little bend right there like he had in his image and then you can even grab these and pull them out if you want a little more pull them down or in or however you like it and when you're done just hit the return key and you have that bendy bendy shadow now it doesn't look soft yet it's going to need a gaussian blur so let's go into the filter menu under blur and choose gaussian blur and uh, here's the uh, the amount 3.2 it's not the official amount i'm just guessing <laughs> So click OK. And our shadow's there. Now that I look at it, I need to nudge it back up a little bit. So I've got the Move tool. I'm going to use the Up arrow key and nudge it up just a tiny bit. And then to make it darker, I think I actually want to pull the, the corners out a little bit more. But to make it darker, here's what you're going to do. Just duplicate that layer a few times. Since it's transparent, it will build up on itself. So just make a copy of the layer. By the way, shortcut for making a quick copy of a layer. Command J on Mac, Control J on Windows. So copy, 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 done. There you go. So there is the little shadow effect. Uh, and if you want to tweak it now, if you decided, oh, I want to tweak it a little bit, you'd want to merge these layers together. So select them all. Just hold the Command key, select all four. And on Windows, that would be the Control key. Then press Command E on Mac or Control E on Windows. It merges them all into one. Now you could go back to Free Transform and Warp. And if you wanted to pull that up a little so it's nothing showing and maybe pull this out a little bit more. What's nice is you can just move it where you want, right? And then it, now if you think, oh, it's too dark, no problem. Just lower the opacity a little till it looks right to you. So, and I think we can even nudge it down just a hair. There we go. So you can pretty much do it any way you want. But uh, there you have it. And, of course, congratulations to Mark Wegner, who won the Gallery at Kelby One opening competition. We'll be doing these uh, all year, in fact. So, Mark, and we're flying Mark and a friend uh, down to Florida, and we're going to have a uh, opening night reception, and then he will be doing an interview that will be broadcast live everywhere. We'll let you guys know where that is so you can watch along. But it's going to be a really fun night. We've got 18 uh, pieces of Mark's work on display, and uh, they're printed beautifully by our friends at mpix.com. So, we're very excited to have them involved in the gallery at Kelby One. Hey, speaking of Kelby One. <laughs> If you like this kind of Photoshop stuff, go over and check us out. We have over 600 full-length online classes on everything about Photoshop and Lightroom and photography you could possibly imagine. Go take the 10-day free trial. You can start watching full-length classes right now this very instant. Well, thanks very much, everybody. Take care. We'll catch you next time.